after discussing in detail about the insulin now we will discuss about the oral anti diabetic agents now as you all know the difference between type 1 and type 2 diabetes in type 1 diabetes there is an absolute deficiency of insulin and that's why insulin administration is the only therapy for type 1 diabetes while the type 2 diabetes it ranges from predominant insulin resistance to relative insulin deficiency up to the predominant insulin deficiency with relative insulin resistance so in type 2 diabetes there is a definite role of oral anti diabetic agents and the usual management plan is starts with in type 2 diabetes starts with diet and lifestyle modification if not controlled then giving a one oral anti diabetic agent if not controlled then increase the dose of this agent still if not controlled then give the combination of oral anti diabetic agents and if not controlled then we introduce the insulin therapy so in the today's class we will discuss about what are the possible target sites or we can say that what are the possible anti diabetic actions of this anti diabetic drugs and the classification of anti diabetic agents so dear students what are the possible ways by which a drug can act as an anti diabetic agent first and foremost is a drug can increases drug will stimulates the beta cells of the pancreas and increases the insulin release from the pancreas and these agents are known as insulin secretagogues then one of the major source of glucose in the plasma is hepatic glucose output there are two main sources one is the hepatic glucose output and second is from the diet that we are taking the glucose so if we reduce is the hepatic output of glucose then also the drug can act as a an anti diabetic agent then increases the glucose utilization by the peripheral tissues mainly the adipose tissue skeletal muscle and liver and similar to that increases the sensitivity how you can increases the glucose utilization by peripheral tissue by increasing the sensitivity of the peripheral tissue to the insulin and overcoming the insulin resistance so we can club these two points together and decrease carbohydrate uptake or absorption okay here i have mentioned glucose but ideally the decrease carbohydrate absorption from the gi tract and lastly increase carbohydrate loss in the urine so these are the possible target sites of anti diabetic agents now we will see that each of these function is carried out by the different group of agents insulin secretagogues which increases the insulin release from beta cells of pancreas and these are sulfonylureas megalitinides dpp4 inhibitor and glp1 analogs dpp4 inhibitors means dipeptidyl peptidase 4 inhibitors and glp1 analog means glucagon like peptide 1 analog okay first sulfonylureas these are the different agents tolbutamide chlorpropamide glipizide glyclazide glibenclamide and glimepiride tolbutamide and chlorpropamide belongs to first generation glipizide glyclazide and glibenclamide belongs to second generation and glimepiride belongs to third generation next is the meglitinides these are repaglinide and nateglinide later on we will see that the mechanism of action 
for the mechanism by which these both this group which promotes the insulin release from the beta cells of the pancreas is same then dipeptidyl peptidase 4 inhibitors these are all the gliptins sitagliptin sexagliptin vildagliptin now when you go through the textbook there are many more agents but at least you should remember two to three agents then GLP glucagon like peptide run analog these are liraglutide and exenatide so these are all the insulin secretagogues then drugs which overcome the insulin resistance these are the insulin sensitizers two groups one is the biguanides two agents fenformin and metformin but fenformin has been withdrawn because of the serious adverse effect that is lactic acidosis and the second is thiazolidinediones okay these are also known as glitazones and the presently the only available agents is pioglitazone the first agent of this group is troglitazone then rosiglitazone and then pioglitazone both the troglitazone and rosiglitazone they had withdrawn because of the hepatotoxicity so these are the two drugs which are helpful to overcome the insulin resistance now the drug which decreases the hepatic glucose output and this is metformin metformin is the agent which decreases the hepatic glucose output now the drugs which inhibit the carbohydrate absorption from the small intestine okay alpha glucosidase are the enzymes which are important which are required for the absorption of the carbohydrate and these enzymes are present into the small intestine on the breast border and the drugs they act by inhibiting these enzymes are acarbos, guargum, miglitol and voglibos. And lastly the drugs which increases the glucose loss in the urine by acting on the sodium glucose co-transport 2 and these are SGLT2 inhibitors and these are depagliflozin and canagliflozin okay so in summary the there are the drugs which increases the insulin release these are insulin secretogogues then the drugs which decreases the insulin resistance these are insulin sensitizer the drug which decreases the hepatic glucose output and the drugs which decreases the carbohydrate absorption of the GI tract and drugs which increases the glucose loss in urine okay in next class we will discuss in detail about the pharmacology of sulfonylureas and I am asking you one question be ready with the answer of that question that why sulfonylureas are not considered as a first agent of choice for a newly detected type 2 diabetic patient okay we will meet in the next class with this discussion on sulfonylurea. Thank you.